Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, a uh, new machine day. I guess you can call this a machine. New piece of equipment day for me anyway. I had mentioned in a video uh, a couple of weeks ago that I was on the look for a hydraulic press. And uh, I'll be honest with you, this was not exactly what I was looking for when I was uh, started that search, but here it is. This is what we've ended up with and tell you a little bit about the story of how this got to be here. So again, I was needing a hydraulic press for the shop here. I've got one at the museum. I actually one that I built probably, I don't know, 12, 13 years ago out at the museum. And uh, it has done well. It's about a 20 ton press. It was uh, literally thrown together out of scrap metal that had, was laying around the museum over Christmas break one year when I was needing a press to do some work out there on. And uh, I, just, I just built it. I mean, I didn't have any plans or drawings, I just built it. And it's, it's worked good, but it's out there and my projects are here. And I was constantly, when I was needing a press, have to go back and forth. And I decided it was time to get a good capable hydraulic press in my shop. I really have been looking for a press that was a pretty hefty press, at least from how much it will press. Like I said, that one out there is a 20 ton press. Uh, the one that we've got here, this is actually a 60 ton press. I was looking for one that had the four independent uh, beams on it or, or rather than channel in here. Uh, and it had a fairly wide base down here. This is wide enough that I can work on it uh, just fine. And this one, it more or less meets my criteria of what I was looking for. The other things that I was looking for was, you know, obviously a good price, you know, we're always looking for a good deal. And I was also looking for something that was going to be close by, something that I wouldn't have to travel a long way to go get something. You guys sent in tons and tons and tons of recommendations and different presses that you had found uh, on all kinds of different places. And a lot of them, were very nice presses, but they were a long ways away and they were, uh, some of them were quite expensive. Um, I was actually prepared to step up and pay a pretty good penny for a press. Uh, and this one kind of fell in my lap and uh, I got a really good deal on it. So the story on this one is, is again, one of my viewers came to the rescue, uh, David Albright up in the middle of Georgia or just south of Atlanta, Carrollton area, Carrollton, Georgia area. Uh, I guess southwest of Atlanta, technically. He, um, he contacted me and said, hey, I just uh, made a deal on a hydraulic press from a machinery dealer from Long uh, Machine Company out in Ferris, Texas, a machinery re uh, re dealer out there. I've actually been to uh, Long Machine out there before, uh, dealt with uh, Mr. Ray Long before on some stuff. Uh, some of you guys may have seen a video that Adam Booth did out there several years ago, uh, but kind of already had a relationship with him, but he had, was looking for a press and he found one that was actually a little bit smaller than this one that kind of suited his needs. But while he was talking to Mr. Ferris or Mr. Long out there, uh, he told him they had this 60 ton press. And he called me and said, hey, I'm going out there here in a week or two to pick up my press. They told me he had a 60 ton. I didn't even really look at it. Uh, if you want to check it out, uh, if, if it's something you're interested in, he said, I'm already taking the trailer out there. I'll bring it home to you. So I did just that. I got up with uh, uh, Mr. Long and we worked out a deal. And uh, let's just say that it was, uh, he made me a good deal on this. It wasn't by any means free. You know, we had to pay some money for it, but uh, it was very, very, very reasonable compared to a lot of the other presses that I was looking for. And to make it even better, uh, David, who was bringing the press back home, uh, you know, I was thinking I was gonna have to drive three and a half hours up there to get it. He said, I tell you what I'll do. He said, I wanna come see your shop. I'll just bring it down to you. So he was kind enough to actually deliver this. So ideal situation. Um, it is a little rough around the edges, but it supposedly works. I have not tried it out yet. We're gonna be checking all that out today. Uh, I do know they told me they drained the fluid out of it. So uh, we, I need, know I need to clean that tank out while it's empty and putting fresh fluid and stuff in there, but uh, supposedly all works. And uh, yeah, with a little TLC, I think we'll have us a very nice hydraulic press. Um, literally just got it unloaded the other day. It has been storming, pouring down rain here all week long. We've had over six inches of rain uh, since Monday. This is a Friday when I'm shooting this video. Uh, had really some severe weather in the areas. Fortunately, none right here, no damage or anything at my house. We've been tornadoes, there's been hail. 
Um, and we literally got it unloaded just as the storm was coming in. And uh, we just got it, it just sat outside the shop for a couple of days until I finally, uh, it stopped raining enough and I got it in right now. It's about to go back out because the uh, first thing we're going to do is get this thing cleaned up. And uh, before we do though, let's, uh, let's just kind of take a look at a couple of the uh, things on here. And uh, my goal today is, is I want to get this thing cleaned up. Uh, probably going to go ahead and try to strip some of the paint off of it, chemically strip some of the paint off of it. Eventually I want to give this thing a new paint job, do a few little repairs to it, make it look a little bit nicer than it does right now. But uh, the nice thing is, is that it appears to be in good mechanical shape. So uh, let's take a closer look. First off, just take a quick look at the nameplate up here. You can see it is a 60 ton press, has a 13 inch uh, travel on the RAM. Assuming everything works fine. Uh, Rogers is actually still around. I think it's Granite Fluid Power now, but they own the rights and then still use the Rogers name. And this was a small press for Rogers. Rogers really specialized in very large uh, hydraulic presses, anywhere from 100 to three or 400 uh, pound pressure, uh, or, or ton, 300, 100 to 300 ton uh, presses. Uh, so this was a smaller one for them. In fact, this is one of the smaller ones that they made. Uh, but again, it's hopefully going to suit my needs just fine. This should be more press than I really ever need, at least I hope. So you can see the actual RAM in here and a uh, nice little feature here. You don't see this on all presses. This one has it. It's actually got a little uh, set screw here on the front and the back that uh, lets this thing ride on some wheels. There's some kind of bearings on here. And this whole head will move left and right. So you can position it right where you need to press. So if you're not pressing something in the very center, instead of having to move your work, you can actually move the RAM uh, <coughs> to fine tune it and get right where you need for it to be. So the distance on the inside here is 45 inches on the inside of the post. So we can have something up to 45 inches wide <coughs> come in here from the top of this to the bottom of the RAM. We're looking at about 39 inches. Uh, according to the tag, we've got 13 inches of pressure on here. The table, the pegs in the table are about 10 inches apart. So, you know, we can kind of fit all this where it needs to go. The uh, H frame across the bottom, it is all the way down at the moment uh, for transportation. As far as adjusting this up and down, uh, we got two cables, one that goes to either side. It fits on this little boat winch looking thing over here. And, uh, Let's see, go the right way. There we go. So that cranks up fairly easily. Not bad at all. This I want to rework. Uh, he actually sent along a couple more of these cranks that he had laying around. Uh, we may upgrade this, do things a little bit differently. I'm not sure quite yet, but uh, you can see it at least works right out of the chute. But I do want to replace the cables on this at the very least and look at uh, just making that a little bit cleaner, a little bit nicer. But it works. It, and uh, it's all you're doing is just raising and lowering it. It's completely safe like that, I think. So uh, good to go. So this is the power unit down here as far as pumping goes. Um, you got a, just a hydraulic ram here. It needs to have a lever put in there, just a piece of handle or whatever. And it's just a pump that you pump it. Uh, there's a gauge back here. I'm guessing that tells you how many tons of pressure you're putting on and uh, all that's connected in. I will say on this that uh, I was told everything works. We're gonna find out. Uh, at the worst, I mean, we may have to replace some seals or something like that in here. It should be fine. This is pretty low tech stuff. I would like to eventually uh, upgrade this to a power pack where I have, uh, you know, a, a motor on here and a hydraulic pump and, a, and just a lever where I can control it from uh, by not having to hand crank on it, where I can just uh, use, use a, the power on there. Most of the units like that will still have the hand operation where you can use either or even or, you know, so you can uh, 
you know, start it out with there and you can do your fine adjusting by hand or you can do it all with the, uh, with the uh, lever using the power hydraulics. But uh, that's my ultimate goal. I will need to round up a, uh, a hydraulic pump and motor and probably build a bigger storage tank and all that to make that work. But no, that is something I would like to do at some point in time. So I don't know what else really to show you. The hydraulic hose up here on the top, probably gonna replace that. I see some cracking in the outer part of it. Uh, probably fine, but again, while we're refurbishing this, easy enough to go ahead and change that out uh, while I'm at it. First thing I wanna do though, is I wanna get this thing cleaned up. It is covered in dirt, oil, grease, etc. cetera. Uh, what I'm gonna do is just take it outside I'm gonna get some degreaser, coat this whole thing down real good. I'm gonna go get my pressure washer and we're just gonna give it a good bath. Once I get that done, I'm gonna come back in here. I'm gonna probably put, go ahead and put some uh, paint stripper, chemical paint stripper on here. I do know I wanna repaint this. So I'm gonna to try to chemically remove as much of it as I can with the pressure washer. And uh, then of course, anything additional we have to do, we're gonna use the, uh, uh, probably a wire wheel on the angle grinder and uh, get that knocked off and give this thing a new paint job. Uh, the frame down on the bottom, there's a couple of pieces of um, uh, angle iron that connect from one side to the other that's kind of whoop de doo got a little, little bend in it. Uh, I may eventually just go ahead and replace those uh, or at least try to straighten them up. They just look ugly. They do have this on casters right now. When I first saw that, I'm like, eh, I don't know if I like that, but you know, after I just wheeled this thing in here, it's probably fine. And if you think about it, the pressure isn't on the wheels, the pressure is on the frame. So uh, I think it's fine. Um, and I like the idea of being able to move it around easily in the shop. Although those casters are a little bit uh, hard to, they don't roll and turn very well. I may go ahead and uh, put some new casters on there as well. We'll have to See, I'm gonna probably take those off and check them out first, see if they can be cleaned up or whether we need to replace them. We'll figure that out as we go. All right, let's uh, take her outside and see if we can get this thing uh, cleaned up. All right, we're gonna start by uh, just giving this thing a good degreasing. I've got some uh, commercial grade, heavy duty degreaser in this uh, squirt bottle. This is a product called Black Max. Uh, you can get it. I get it at my local Napa store. I'm sure they have it available at other locations as well or other stores as well, but that's where I've been able to find it. And uh, it's a really good degreaser. I'd like to just start by going all the way around the machine. I do this with pretty much any new machine that I bring into the shop. I like to give it a good cleaning before I start working on things. And uh, this is a good way to do it. So I will usually pressure wash. I know people tell me they don't like to pressure wash. They're worried about getting water in the machine. They're worried about getting water in the electronics. You know, I'm gonna be going through this, or this machine, usually I'm gonna change the fluids, you know, as part of my initial maintenance. So I'm not too worried if I get a little bit of water in things it will dry out and if the machine is, uh, you know, pretty tight and sealed up, you shouldn't get much water or anything in it anyway. In the case of this press, there's really not anything on it that I'm worried about uh, getting wet. And uh, it rode on a trailer all the way back from Texas through rain showers and everything else anyway. So and it's been sitting outside in the rain for a couple of days. So again, not too worried about it. All right, I'm gonna get this thing coated down real good. We'll get the pressure washer fired up and see if we can get this thing cleaned up. All right, here we go with the pressure washer. Go this way where I'm blowing it away from the shop. All right, that's looking better. Uh, next step, I'm gonna let this dry for a little bit and uh, we'll get some paint stripper on there and see if we can get it cleaned up even better. 
Well guys, after a couple of rounds of paint stripping and pressure washing, we got most of the old paint and everything off of this um, press and you can kind of see its warts a little bit better now. It's really not in bad shape. It just needs a little TLC. Um, tell you what guys, from here, there's a couple of things I want to do. Um, first off, these bent angle pieces down here on the bottom. I think I'm just going to cut those off and replace them. Uh, I looked for some angle iron. Uh, I thought I had some two inch, just quarter inch thick, two inch wide angle iron. Thought I had some laying around the shop. I don't. But what I do have is some square tubing that's that same size. And uh, it's pretty much here. It's paid for. It's left over from some projects. I got enough to do both of those. And the tubing is actually going to be stronger than that angle iron. And I'm not sure what caused that to bend previously, but hopefully uh, the square tubing that we put down there, it won't do that again in the future. So I think what we're gonna do is we're just gonna, I'm just gonna cut these out and we're just gonna weld new pieces in there. That's gonna be step one. I'm gonna get in here with my bandsaw and see if I can just uh, cut this out. So I got the braces out now. I just left these little angle pieces here up on the side. My idea is, is I'm just gonna butt that, um, the tubing up on this and just kind of let it sit on there and weld it in place. There's no reason to really have to get in here and grind all that weld out. It's just, we'll just weld right on top of it. I don't see a reason to do it. So we're, that's the game plan. All right, let me go get some tubing cut and we'll see if we can get that stuff uh, put in there. I've got my tubing in place now and I got this stuff clamped in. Whenever I cut that, I noticed it kind of flared out down here. So I took the clamp and pulled it back in tight. I had measured it beforehand so I knew how long I needed to put a piece in there. We're gonna go ahead and uh, just weld this in and I think it's gonna be a major improvement. All right, I think we got those welded in place. Uh, I like the looks of this actually better than I did the angle iron. I wasn't sure I was gonna like this, but it looks great. And that square tubing is gonna be a lot stronger than that angle iron ever was too. It'd be a lot less likely to bend or distort. So uh, I'm happy with how that looks and how that's gonna function. Um, looks good. Let's see if we can take some of this other stuff off. Um, Main goal here is, again, I just want to get this thing ready to wire wheel and get ready to paint. So that's kind of my next big step. So the more I can get off of this to make that easier, uh, the better off we're going to be. So I'm going to start with trying to get that hydraulic pack off. We got the hydraulic line going up top here. I'm going to start by breaking this loose. And I will note that I put some good pig mat up underneath this because I'm fully anticipating that we're going to leak hydraulic oil all over the place. Okay, got that broke loose. And <laughs> no oil. I was told this has been drained. I'm assuming it has been, so we'll have to prime all this when we redo the cylinders and what have you, so no big deal there. Let's uh, see if we can get the bolts off down here on the bottom that's holding it on. There's also a bolt over here on the side. Let's pull that one out. There we go. And there is one more right here, but it's broken. I think this will come off now. So I'm just going to go ahead and pull this uh, whole pump unit off. Go ahead and loosen it up and pull it off while we're at it. And uh, looks like someone tried to weld that before. I may try re-welding it. All right, that's got that knocked out. I want to pull this hydraulic hose off the top. It needs to be replaced. You can tell it's getting kind of rubbers on it. It's kind of bad. So let's see, I think that'll fit that one. This one should fit here. 
and we should be able to just turn that off. There we go. And there's another one on the back side. I'm going to knock it off as well, and we'll have that disconnected. Next step is I want to drop the hydraulic ram out of here, and I have come back here and put this up underneath the uh, uh, gantry crane, and I've got that uh, ram supported by the crane, and what I want to do now is go ahead and pull. There's a set screw on the front and the back. So it's really tight, tighter than it should be. I'll go ahead and do some work on that while I have it out. But I'm gonna take the set screw out as well as take these rollers off the front and the back. And hopefully we should be able to just drop this uh, ram down and get it out. While I have it off, uh, I'm gonna look into seeing if we need to replace seals and that kind of stuff. I have, I'll be honest with you guys, I have very little experience working with hydraulic stuff, um, seeing videos and stuff on it, but I don't know that much about it, but it seems to me that while we got that ram apart, would be a good time to go ahead and take it apart and service it if it needs it and uh, get that taken care of. So I've got that out of the way. These are just some rollers that are on here. There's a just a bolt that goes through it. I'm gonna take these off. Normally it rides on that channel on these rollers and then you lock it down with that set screw. So I'm basically just taking all this off and then hopefully this will just drop straight down. Although those nuts may get in the way. Set screws on. Hopefully we can get it off without too much trouble. All right, I'm gonna do the same thing on the back side, and uh, we'll see if we can drop this down. All right, we should be ready to start dropping this down, and this is where it's gonna get interesting. There's a nut that's welded on up here, and uh, it's got a clear. I'm hoping that I can kind of pick up on one side and get it to come over. Yep, no such luck. I'm going to have to, uh, like I said, there's a square headed nut that's welded in right here. I'm gonna have to cut one of them off and be easy enough to put it back on, weld it back on after we put everything back together. But for right now to get it off, there's, it's the only way it's gonna clear. Uh, it can't come off the ends, it won't come off that way. This was obviously uh, re-engineered after the, after the original. This is not original, these brackets. So uh, we're just gonna have to make do. We'll just zip that off. All right, I took a zip wheel on an angle grinder on the other side and just cut that nut off. And now we should be able to drop this right on down. Next thing I want to do is go ahead and pull these, uh, the H-frame off of this. There are four bolts that go through. There's some spacers in here that hold all this together, it slides up and down. I've, I pulled the four bolts out. It should come into two different pieces and we can just set these down the floor. I've got the first one here suspended from the gantry. The one on the back, I've got some clamps clamping it to the frame so that it can't fall off while it's unsupported. And uh, we'll flip it around and get those off once we get this one off here. So let me go ahead uh, and get this out. Uh, should be able to reach around here and just uh, zip those off. So I got to that's not even tight. Uh, let's see here. Oh. All right, that bolt is out. All right, I'm going to have to 
get a punch and drive that out. I think this tube this is bent just a little bit and it's not wanting to come out. There it comes. Actually, the bolt's bent. Interesting. And there's the spacer that goes in between them. Looks like I'll be getting some new bolts. Got a pallet that I'm just dropping these on so I can uh, easily move them around the shop with a pallet jack. All right, got that one off. We'll flip the uh, press around and get the other one off. Take this boat winch off. Clearly not original to this machine by any stretch of the imagination. Um, and I'm not sure what I'm gonna do to replace it, whether we put a new unit on here, but this one will not be going back on there, I promise you. The last thing to come out of here are gonna be these uh, pulleys. These are what the cables uh, run on to raise and lower the table. And I'm just gonna go ahead and pull them out. I think we will have every removable piece off of this. I'll go ahead, there's one more here, and then there's one on the other side. It only needs to be, because this one just goes up and back down. The other one goes up, over, and back down. But we'll get those off of there. Well, there you go. One disassembled uh, Roger 60 ton shop press. Uh, I'm happy with how it looks. I mean, overall, the condition is not bad. It's a little rough from a paint standpoint, but when we put a new paint, coat of paint on this thing, it's gonna look awesome. And structurally, there's really nothing wrong with it. It just uh, has seen a long, hard life and been put up wet a few times, uh, but uh, nothing that we can't overcome. What's next? Uh, I do wanna go through, well, no, we're gonna have to get this thing wire wheeled, painted, obviously start reassembling it. I want to take that cylinder apart, like I said, probably just go ahead and replace the seals in it, inspect it, make sure there's no surprises in there that we need to uh, come up with a solution before we go any farther. The other big thing that I need to really figure out is the, uh, the pump for this thing. Now I've got the one right here that we took off and I'm debating whether I even want to put this thing back on or not. I know that ultimately my goal is to put a uh, hydraulic, you know, electric uh, pump motor where I have, you know, I can just go over there and, and do it with a, a valve rather than sitting here cranking on it. Uh, I need to do some research figuring out what I need to make that happen. I know that you can get some off the shelf like Interpack kits that you can adapt to these. Uh, you can also fairly easily build something. My problem is, is my expertise is not hydraulic, so I need uh, to reach out to some guys that know a little bit more about that and come up with some solutions uh, on getting this thing motorized and with a, a pump on it, a, a motorized pump rather than a hand pump, uh, which is my ultimate goal. So uh, that's kind of where we are. Um, I imagine we'll go ahead and get this uh, thing cleaned up here fairly quickly and start looking at some of the other stuff. I'm sure we'll have some videos coming up on this in the near future. And uh, with that, that is gonna be a wrap on this episode. As always, guys, thanks so much for watching. Please do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thumbs up and comments, always greatly appreciated. Hit that bell icon to get notifications when new videos are posted. And a big, huge thank you to everybody that has subscribed to the channel if you haven't already, please do so. 
And a big, huge thank you also to the supporters of the site who support through Patreon and PayPal, et cetera. Really enables me to do things out here in the shop and share them with you guys. And with that, we're going to sign off. We'll catch you on the next video. Again, thanks for watching. Thank you.